Good morning. Uh, as Hannah said, uh, my name is Dan Bream. I'm the technical product manager for our industry and high products here at the Ordnance Survey. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the um, OS Mastermind topography layer building height attributes. Uh, this is the beta release, which was released at the end of October, uh, possibly on the 1st of November. Uh, this is the first release of building height data since um, December 2014 which was the last release of Alpha, uh, the last of three releases. Okay, I'm just quickly going to run through uh, the agenda, what we plan to go through today. Uh, initially, I'll just run through a quick overview of the building height attributes. Um, I'll then uh, touch upon the creation process. We'll look at some possible applications. Uh, I'll go into a bit of detail uh, about the technical detail of the product. Uh, we'll look at some supply. I'll then hand over to my colleague Simon, who will give us a quick demonstration. Uh, he'll then hand back to me, and I will inform you of what we plan to do to um, uh, enhance the product uh, for the next release. Uh, after that, we'll uh, we'll hopefully answer any questions uh, that you have. And also, just to say, we are recording this webinar, and we'll circulate a recording of that to you afterwards as well. Okay, so uh, the build of high attribute is fundamentally an enhancement to uh, and part of the OS mass map topography layer. Um, it can't be used without access to the topography layer. In, its, in, in itself, it's a simple CSV file with values. It contains no geometry or positional detail in, in the CSV file itself. Uh, the data is structured exactly um, as the data was in the alpha. Uh, and um, in, in essence, uh, the, the valuable uh, attributes are the five height attributes it contains. There are three absolute height values. Uh, these are values against the Newlin height datum or local equivalent. And from those, we also have derived two uh, relative height values, uh, which uh, are derived from the absolute values. Uh, hopefully, this image shows what those values are uh, and to represent. We have um, the absolute H min value, which is the lowest point of the building where it intersects the ground. We have the maximum value here, which uh, is the highest point of the building where we can measure it. Uh, the absolute H2 value is a calculated value which aims to represent the building eaves. And from these three absolute values, we then generate two relative height values. Uh, the relative H max is derived value from a calculation between the absolute H max and the absolute H min. And the relative height 2 value is a derived value from the calculation of um, the ABH S, uh, the absolute H2 and the absolute H min values. Okay, uh, I'm just going to touch on how we create this data. Um, all of the heights contained within the product are derived photogrammetrically, that is from uh, overlapping aerial photographs. Uh, these are used to create a digital terrain model and a digital surface model. Uh, these, are, these are created using a pixel matching process. Uh, hopefully the diagram in the bottom right there shows the difference between the two uh, terrain models, uh, but a digital surface model, or DSM as it's frequently referred to, is a measure of the surface of the Earth that includes uh, all terrain features visible on that surface at the time of capture. We use this to calculate the maximum uh, height value. Uh, in, the, uh, in the height attributes, and uh, digital terrain model or DTM, uh, which is actually generated from the DSM, is a representation of the surface of the Earth with all uh, the extraneous features removed, such as building, vegetation, uh, bridges, etc. And we use this to calculate the, uh, the minimum values in the product. Once we have these two data sets, we then use uh, uh, we then create values for each building within the OS mass map uh, topography layer. Uh, this, the, the image we use to create the DTM and DSM uh, source data is the same imagery we use for uh, um, up to update our large scale topographic data uh, and, uh, and also our imagery layer products. Okay, uh, I'm just going to touch on possible applications because obviously this really lies in how you will use it yourselves. We use it at the Ordnance Survey so we have an understanding of what we think it would be used for, but primarily I think. Its value lies possibly in urban planning, environmental planning, asset management, emergency response, things such as estimating the levels of heights in buildings, possible uh, radio signal propagation. I think really we would be very interested to hear um, hear back from yourselves as to what you propose to use it from, uh, what you propose to use it for, or what you have used it for. Uh, if you could feed that any of that back to us, I think we'd find that very useful in any future enhancements. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you on that front.
Okay, I'm just going to touch on uh, some of the additional technical detail. Um, I've already mentioned the five attributes, the five height attributes in the product. There are an additional uh, five attributes that go along with those. Um, first and foremost, there is TOID. TOID, uh, as I'm sure you know, is uh, a re uh, the, let me start again. the unique features reference taken from the topography layer. It's prefixed with an OSGB and then can be up to 16 digits long. Uh, this is what is used to join the BHA data to the topo. Uh, without joining on the toy, the BHA data itself is, is, is unusable, really. Um, my colleague will run through um, some of these in his demonstration in a moment. In addition, we have the toy version. This is the version of the toy in topo for which the height values will be calculated. Uh, on top of that, we have um, tile reference, which simply relates to the topo tile to which it relates. We have the uh, BHA process date. This is the date that we have created the data. It is not the date of the source data capture. Um, this is quite useful, as I will explain uh, in a minute, for differentiating within product which parts of the data are new beta product and which parts of the data are taken from the, um, the, the last alpha product. Uh, and finally, we have the uh, confidence level values. This basically describes the confidence we have in the accuracy of the BHA values per building. In the documentation, uh, we have five listed in product. At present, we are only using three of these. And I think we acknowledge the fact that they are currently of limited value, but we are looking to improve that. At the moment, the three that are um, used are 99, which is the buildings for which, we, for which the confidence level of the values has not been assessed. Uh, this is the majority of buildings at present. Uh, we have 90, which is for buildings that don't have necessarily all the building height attribute values, and uh, certain buildings will have a value of 20, which are ones that we believe are better uh, and more well represented uh, in the data. As I state, uh, we're still investigating methods to assess quality, um, as, uh, and um, obviously having most buildings as 99 uh, isn't, isn't ideal at present. I'm going to just quickly touch on the uh, supply. Uh, the data is available as CSV file only. Um, uh, I think it's probably worth mentioning at this point uh, the reason we haven't included it currently as part of the topography layer. Uh, that largely revolves around the fact that that would require a change to the schema. Um, I think the recent challenges we have with the schema changes for descriptive terms have led us to believe that at present this is the best way for us to um, display this data. Uh, for the time being. Uh, the data is currently uh, available only via OS orders. It's delivered in 5K chunks, which correspond to the 5K chunks in the um, topography layer. We estimate that the currency of the DSM DTM data that's been used to create the values is, should be mostly no longer than five years old, uh, and the product will be updated on a six monthly basis, which is an advancement from the alpha which didn't have any consistent um, update cycle. Uh, I think it was just three releases. Um, the product will be released again in April, where we're hoping to have some enhancements, and then again in uh, October. Uh, at this point, I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, who will just run a quick demonstration on how to use uh, the attribute data. Yep. Pause. Yeah. Hi there. <clears throat> Hi there. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, three of the tools that you can use to uh, join and load in uh, some of the building height CSV data. So um, first one I'll show uh, is ArcMap. Um, so this is just looking at uh, a layer of uh, building features that I've taken from uh, top of area. Um, so you have a kind of the toy reference and the geometry. Uh, and then taking just the CSV um, as it comes um, from the product in its raw form, um, you can just import it into uh, ArcMap using the Add Data tool. Um, and then literally just select your CSV, load it in as a, a new layer, and it will read that in. And you'll see uh, you have the uh, toyed field, 
And then you have the data fields that Dan uh, went through earlier. Uh, and then you can simply uh, join the two layers together uh, using the join and relate for the spatial layer and just simply pick the toy field. Uh, and yeah, you can then join it that way. Um, and then each of your uh, polygon features will have the height, and you'll be able to visualize that using a tool in art called the 2D to 3D, um, which is part of the 3D analyst package. Um, so that's that. Uh, and then uh, another database um, that you can use is, is uh, sorry, PostGIS. Um, so with this, uh, you can uh, take in the CSV data, uh, create a table for it, which will look something similar to this. Uh, the reason some of the number fields I've put as characters are simply that some of the values will be in as null values, um, just as part of, I guess, the capture process or while they're being filled in. Um, so just for the sake of getting the data in um, and ready to use, uh, this um, helps out, and then you can convert the fields later to number fields as you go. Um, and then simply... Um, you can use this copy command uh, to take your CSV and load it in. <clears throat> if I move this down, yeah. Um, so where you'll have multiple CSVs for each of those 5 km chunks, um, you can uh, run a kind of simple batch script just to uh, merge those into one uh, big CSV uh, and then import it in as one step. And then uh, once it's all in, you'll then be able to access it in PostGIS. And you can see uh, we've got the same thing that we saw in Arc earlier. So we've got the toy field, we've got the version, the date, and all of the height values. Um, and I suppose the advantage with doing with PostGIS um, is you can use another tool called QGIS, where you can quite easily just uh, link um, QGIS up to your PostGIS layers and start viewing the data in there. So what we have uh, here, I um, just did a QGIS desktop. Um, got the same layer of buildings that we saw earlier. Um, and what I'm going to do here is just uh, take, so this has been joined up with the building heights already. I'm just going to take uh, some of our uh, terrain data. Um, not too useful in London, I suppose, or it's mostly flat, but it will show a little bit. Um, and just some backdrop mapping. Um, and then what I'm going to do is use a, a free tool um, that comes uh, with QGIS from a plugin repository called QGIS to 3GS. And what this does is it takes uh, the kind of terrain layer, um, and then it takes your building layer with the, the height attribute attached. Um, and going through the settings, uh, you can use the height in your style, um, and you can then create something quite quickly like this, which will open up. And you can get a nice visualization of the, so each polygon with its height feature, you've got the kind of terrain around. Obviously, it'll look a lot nicer for a, a a nicer kind of gradiented area. Um, but yeah, you'll be able to draw that up quite quickly. Um, and then as, as Dan was saying with his examples of how you can use this, um, there, there are things like uh, clutter modeling, um, where you can kind of group those areas into small gridded squares and start looking at where your tool buildings are. So things like mobile phone companies, looking at reception, um, kind of home office type stuff where they might be looking at land use, um, tree heights with DSM and stuff like that. You can start using this for um, analytical stuff like that. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, so they'd like to bring your screens back to me. Uh, right, I'm just going to quickly, uh, as a final thing, run through um, 
what we anticipate are, are some future enhancement, enhancements, uh, hopefully for the next release, but well, some will be in the next release, but some will be uh, slightly beyond that. First and foremost, uh, you know, we're acutely conscious that this is not a full national data set. Uh, currently, I think we estimate space is about 70%, although that does contain uh, about 90% of, of buildings. Um, so we'll be looking to, over the next uh, 18 months to two years, to try and fill in all of the gaps in there. Uh, secondly, I think we probably need to address the fact that um, the product does contain alpha data. Uh, so we, uh, that will be data that was created for the last alpha release in December 2014. Uh, we will look to uh, gradually erode that so it becomes uh, considerably less and then ultimately none at all. Uh, the reason we've included the alpha data in areas uh, is areas where we currently don't have more up-to-date data. It was decided that it was of more value to have uh, slightly out-of-date data than no coverage at all. Also, within areas where we did have good coverage, there were small pockets of corrupt data. And again, we figured it was better to have um, uh, it was better than having holes in the data or clearly incorrect data. So we made the uh, decision to uh, include small amounts of alpha. Uh, if you wish to delineate between what is purely beta data and what is alpha data, um, the processed by date is a key indicator of that. Any data that was processed um, in 2017 and subsequently in 2018 and beyond will be beta data. Uh, any alpha data we've included will have the um, process date of uh, anything before 2017. Uh, but most of it is 2014, with a little, uh, with a small amount of 2013 data as well. Uh, uh, accuracy. I'm aware that we haven't really addressed uh, any kind of accuracy statement with the product. Uh, we're currently trying to work out the best way of doing this. Uh, for example, providing an RMSE for each of the absolute height values. Uh, we are currently doing some testing on this, and we would ideally look to have that in place for the next release in uh, April. Uh, I think we'll probably have uh, looked to have an RMSE of sorts on the absolute values, certainly the um, maximum and uh, minimum height values. Uh, the confidence flags, I think we've already touched upon. There's certainly room for improvement there. Uh, and uh, additionally, we will be looking to remove some of the older data. Uh, what we really want is to move towards the three-year update cycle, where the source data used to create the heights uh, is no older than uh, three years old. Uh, and it's not on this slide, but it occurred to me as I was walking in this morning, we are also looking to include uh, certain structures. Now, these are, we haven't yet defined which structures we would include. Um, unfortunately, some that we might like to include, uh, for example, wind turbines, which would be quite a useful feature. They're not very well represented in the DSM data, so we need to analyze uh, whether or not there's any value in containing in, in in using those, but there's certainly other structures I think would add value to this data set. Um, and that's that's really it from me. Uh, all I really need to say is that we have a lot of information on the webpage. We have user guides and also technical specification and uh, other documentation. But additionally, um, the consultancy and technical support team will be able to offer uh, some assistance 